Good morning, everybody. It's so lovely to see so many of you here online. And um, I know that some of you will be watching later. And uh, of course, others will be reading the service sheet. You can see from the pictures there um, that we're going to be thinking about Anna and Simeon this morning and Jesus being presented at the temple. I bought my own. I keep my uh, my nativity sets up until this week, uh, until Candlemas just to remind me of what Christmas was all about, because it can disappear very quickly, can't it? So here we have Mary and Joseph and um, a teeny tiny baby Jesus, who, when he goes back in his box, will, uh, will fit inside everything else. And I love these particular two pictures that you're going to see once or twice through the service. Uh, and the one on the left, I can't remember um, who the artist is, uh, but it's, I just love the picture of Anna and Sim Sim Simeon's faces, the, the joy, the beauty. And then the one on the right is by a series of pictures called Jesus Maffa. It was a, a project to have lots of the Bible stories told in pictures in an African context and once again if you, if you went and had a look uh, a bit bigger the look on Anna's face is just just beautiful. So welcome, welcome to all who are gathered here for this service whether you wherever you are, whether you're on Zoom, whether you're watching, listening to a recording, phoning on into the service or reading it on paper. We are joined together in the love of God to worship him. And just one more reminder that a bit later on, we're going to do something that the Church of England used to do, and most of it doesn't so much anymore, which is to bless all the candles they're going to use for the year. Well, we're not going to quite do that. But if you do have a light of some description that you'd like to bring and light later, whether that be switching it on or whether it be uh, lighting a candle, then uh, it would be useful to have one. Our call to worship. There's a bit there for you to respond to. We worship the God of time and eternity. We worship the God who existed before creation leapt into being. Our beginning, our present and our future. We worship the God who has been with us throughout the year that has passed. Our beginning, our present and our future. We worship the God who will be with us as our stories continue, as this new year unfolds. Our beginning, our present and our future. We worship the God who is with us today and will be forever. Amen. So as I said, we're going to think about the themes of Candlemas, one of those uh, festivals of the church that us non-conformists don't often think about. It's on the 2nd of February and this is the Sunday on which it is celebrated. We also think of Holocaust Memorial Day, which was on Wednesday this week. We consider the story of Jesus being presented at the temple when Mary went to be purified after childbirth because she was thought to have been unclean, that carried on quite a long time into the history of the world and still does in many cultures. Even in our cultures, I have met ladies who remember being churched, going back to church after having um, had a baby. We think of Jesus being the light of the world and the light to the nations. In the darkness that is superstition about what is clean and unclean. In the darkness that causes terrible, terrible events like the Holocaust and all that has followed since. In the darkness that is this pandemic, we think about Jesus, the light of the world, being presented at the temple. 
Simeon and Anna drew on the riches of their ancient faith to look forward with Mary and Joseph to the future for their infant son, Jesus, our Messiah. And so we sing at the end of Epiphany, we sing an Epiphany hymn, perhaps, well, for the last time this year, probably. And we sing, the silent stars shine down on us with bright but sightless eye. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to worship you again this morning. Life can seem bleak at the moment, despite the slithers of hope. Shine into our lives and into our hearts the hope of your wondrous love for us. Show us the beauty of your creation and the hope of the sunlight and new life, even now poking through the ground and out from twigs. Help us to hear your voice in calls from others, in acts of kindness, in the gaps between pronouncements and news. Help us to rest in all the in-between moments of our lives, the moments when we look back and forward the moments when we can find you between the fear, the anxiety, the half-truths, that they become moments of healing. Help us in our worship to feel your eternal presence, to know your majesty, your power, your strength, to give you the worship and honour due to you, our Lord. Help us to leave this time of worship strengthened and empowered by our worship of you in spirit and in truth, taking the light of your presence out into the world. A world that needs you so much. 
accept our worship, O God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. A prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, how will we recognize you when you come among us? Anna and Simeon seemed to have no problems, but for us it's much more difficult. For you do not wear distinctive clothes, you do not speak with a religious voice, and we do not know what you look like. So, Lord Jesus, we are worried that when you do come, we will simply overlook you. Yet the trouble may well lie within us. Unlike Anna and Simeon, we have not spent enough time in prayer. We do not possess enough knowledge of the Bible, and our vision is not good enough to see you in the acts and words of others. Forgive us, Lord, for our failings and misconceptions. Improve our vision so that we may see you more distinctly. And in whatever unexpected situation we may meet you, help us to welcome you. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we're going to hear our readings this morning, the first from the book of Isaiah and then from Luke. I think is it Andy and Kate who are reading this morning? No, I'm doing. Oh, I thought it was me. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Off you go. Sorry. Okay. Is that this one? No, That's no. my fault. <laughs> no. Starting at chapter sixty-one, verse ten. Jerusalem rejoices because of what the Lord has done. She is like a bride dressed for her wedding. God has clothed her with salvation and victory. As surely as seeds sprout and grow, the sovereign Lord will save his people and all the nations will praise him. I will speak out to encourage Jerusalem. I will not be silent until she's saved and her victory shines like a torch in the night. Jerusalem, the nations will see you victorious. All their kings will see your glory. You will be called by a new name, a name given by the Lord himself. You will be like a beautiful crown for the Lord. And the second reading is from Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 22. When the time of pur their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as is, it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves 
or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. very much for those readings. So we heard some of Isaiah's prophecy about the return of the exiles to Jerusalem, the building of the, of the temple and Jerusalem's vindication. It's interesting when, and this is absolutely no uh, comment at all on the on Jane's choice of which version to read from. Very interesting um, about the different uh, understanding and the different motives of the people who translate our Bibles. And different words are translated in different ways. In the New Revised Standard Version, which, which I was recommended from college and I use most of the time, the word that, that's read uh, as victorious is read as vindicated. That's quite interesting, because if you're thinking about Jerusalem being victorious or Jerusalem being vindicated, they've got slightly different meanings and you would take slightly different understandings from them. And perhaps prophecy being about the time in which it was written, but also for many times after that time, perhaps the vindication of Jerusalem wasn't going to be as they hoped in the, its rebuilding at the time. Perhaps it was to happen at that moment when Anna and Simeon saw the baby Christ. Maybe perhaps it was when they saw up that baby and knew that who he was. Perhaps there have been vindications since. And perhaps in the future, there will truly be the vindication of Jerusalem. For it seems it's not now, with all the sadness of what continues to go on there. 
And so Jesus is presented at the temple as were all baby boys or certainly all their firstborn baby boys. And probably there were many others presented on that day with their offerings bought with, by their parents. But something was different about this baby. Perhaps Anna and Simeon, who had been waiting faithfully for so long, checked each baby. Perhaps they had long given up doing so. I imagine if Anna had been waiting there from her perhaps early 20s, perhaps even before that, until she was 84, she might have given up checking every single baby who walked through the porticos. But perhaps, well, definitely, they had not given up hope because they were still looking forward not back into the past. They looked into the past for the clues of what they were looking for, but they were looking forward in hope. I hope we can take their example too in bad times. In the tough times of Roman occupation, they looked to what God would do next, not for things to return to what they had once been. There's a lot of people talking at the moment about when we go back and how wonderful it will be. And yes, it will be good to see each other again properly, to worship in our buildings. But let's not look back to replicating exactly what we had, but with God, look forward to God's plans for us. So Simeon was guided by the spirit that rested on him to this baby, to this small scrap wrapped in its blankets. And he took the son of God in his arms and he praised God that this very Jewish child there for this very Jewish ceremony had been sent not just for his own people, but for everyone. Now, after all his waiting, Simeon sings out loudly for all to hear in the battling, bustling courts of the temple, the nature of this child. And now he could go in peace in God's time. His waiting was over. His faithfulness had been rewarded. This child was bringing light and salvation to the nations, all the nations but not without opposition, turning the order of the world upside down, causing the falling and rising of many, making people's inner thoughts open to hear and piercing his mother's soul. Not entirely what you would want to hear about your squeaky new baby, perhaps, but I think after that angel's visit, Mary must have had an inkling. I know too, but normally we would we would talk about things in the opposite direction. It doesn't say that we will rise people to the height of the top. It says we will first lower the top to the bottom. We would usually think about rising and falling, but this is falling and rising. You know, we follow a faith that is upside down. We follow a faith that is supposed to change the way the world thinks about things and turn it upside down. And when I get a bit too comfy in my faith, I remember, try to remember that I'm supposed to be turning the world upside down. The assumptions of what is good, what is top and what is bottom completely reversed and that's what this baby came to do and Anna too saw this child and she knew who he was she knew he was who she had been waiting for all those many years of living and praying in the temple in her great old age she too was rewarded for her constancy and her faithfulness I wonder if she felt, as so many older people say to me, that she was no longer of any use, that she couldn't do what she used to do, that no one noticed her anymore. 
but her long years of keeping her relationship with God close and alive meant that she knew when it was time to speak about this child. This child who had come for the redemption of Jerusalem and for all. Never underestimate your faithfulness, your prayer life, or the chances to encourage your fellow believers or tell them what you think God has been saying to you that they might take note of. I don't suppose that Anna and Simeon ran the youth club anymore or put up the tables for the temple bazaar or played the organ or ran the choir. Not anymore. But God had jobs for them that involved their continued faithfulness. The space in their lives that they now had to pray and to listen and their voices to tell those around them what they had heard. Maybe most of us will not hear God's voice as clearly as we seem to think Anna and Simeon did in this story, but God still speaks to each of us in so many different ways. And then the story ends for now. Mary and Joseph go back to Nazareth. And I love that it tells us that Jesus is a child who grows and becomes strong. In a world where most children didn't survive their first few years, he grows and becomes strong. He is filled with wisdom and the favour of God was upon him. But apart from a few accounts that didn't actually make it into our Bibles for whatever reason, he doesn't appear to have been a miraculous super child that draws notice and storytelling. I think if he had been going round healing baby birds everywhere and, um, you know, miraculously never falling out with anybody or, or, or being even remotely like our um, like our Christmas carols, you know, that that seemed to think that he was completely beautifully behaved at all times. I think if that had been the case, we'd have heard about it. But he seems to have had a fairly normal childhood, which is hugely reassuring to me. It means our God truly became flesh and lived among us. That our God experienced work, hunger, obedience to his parents, family, friendships, moments for fun and deep sadness and community. He really does understand what it means to be one of us. Suffer the little children to comfort to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And so now, some prayers to bless the light in our house, in our houses, our flats, our wherever we are that we that we spend our time. Perhaps you might like to light your light, whatever it is. Or as someone's just suggested, look out of the window and see the light coming in. We're giving thanks for Jesus, the light of the world and the light to the nations. God, our father, whose son was revealed to Simeon as the light of the nations and the glory of Israel. Let these candles and lights be to us a sign of his light and presence. That guided by the Holy Spirit, we may live by the light of faith until we come into the light of glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the flame of your love never be quenched in our hearts, O Lord. Waking or sleeping, living or dying, let us delight in your presence. Let the flame of your love brighten our souls and illumine our path and let the majesty of your glory be our joy, our life, our strength, now and forever. Lord, give us the eyes of faith 
to see your presence in the world. Where fear closes our eyes, help us. Where tears blind us, heal us. Where busyness keeps us from noticing, slow us. Where pride gets in the way, release us. Set us free to work in the world. And now, O oh God, who in the work of creation commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may shine into the hearts of all your people, dispelling the darkness of ignorance, hatred and unbelief, and revealing to them the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing again now. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son. We come now to our prayers of intercession. There aren't any prayers in the chat, but I know you will have people close to your heart. And I have my prayer book in which I've written quite a lot of people this week that um, I've heard of that need our help and our prayers and uh, to know that God loves them. So let us pray. Oh, holy God, light of the world, Shine on the dark places and show up the wrong in our world, in our governments and commerce, 
in our communities and cultures, in our families and friendship groups, and in our own hearts. We pray for all who suffer through evil and selfishness, and for all those working to make our world a better place. Shine your light where there is hopelessness and despair, where people are ill in body, mind and spirit, where there is poverty, homelessness, abuse, We pray for all who suffer in any way and for all those who work to heal and improve the lives of their fellow beings, human beings. We ask that you shine your light into this pandemic and all its effects. We pray for all anxious, grieving, struggling with many aspects of life for all working on vaccines and researching this disease, caring for the sick, making decisions on how to manage society, working in our essential services. And we ask for prayer for ourselves for all the anxieties and fears, the joys and the longings of our hearts. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus, the light to the nations, the light of the world. Amen. Lord, we would bring to you now all that we give to you. We bring to you all the money that is paid into the bank accounts of our churches, whether that's through a check sent to the treasurer or by direct debit. We thank you for all those who have continued to give. We thank you for our treasurers who look after our money for us and work so hard making things as they should be. We thank you for the measure of health and strength we have and the surplus that we have out of which we can give. And we offer you all this. And we ask that you will use the gifts and the givers for your kingdom here on earth. Amen. And so we come for, to our last hymn together this morning. Uh, we will sing this and then we will say, we will unmute after this hymn, after this hymn, not before, because it'll be terrible, won't it? <laughs> um, we'll unmute after this hymn and say the grace together. And then uh, those of you who wish to do so uh, can stay and chat for a little while. And uh, otherwise we will see you next week, hopefully. And so we sing, Christ be our light, Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Thank you. 
You're all unmuting yourselves. Um, I'd like to thank Barbara and Anton and Christine and our readers and everybody else who's helped uh, to put this together this morning and uh, give us a chance to worship together. So we say to each other, may the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the love, and the love of God, and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, Spirit be with us all, 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 all